And now Chrysler presents Plague from Space, starring Gene Raymond. There's a storm off the east coast. Might have delayed him, maybe even turned back. <laughs> He'll be here. General Bonamy says he'll arrive at a specific time. He arrives. Especially when there's a replacement to be made. Jeff, about those crashes. I think if I speak to General Bonamy... You stay we'd... out of it. You're a doctor, nothing else. This is my affair. Men killed, equipment destroyed. It's been going on for months. He has every right to relieve me. I've lost all respect, all discipline. No, you haven't, Jeff. Those accidents weren't your fault. Everybody knows that. Uh, it happened to me, my command, my responsibility. Somewhere along the line, I, I lost my perspective. Jeff, you're the best tactician in this command. Yeah. General Bonamy won't let you go. Stop giving yourself a hard time. Kinnock's a big base. Maybe too big for me. Once I had it, once I could have handled any base. Now, slipping away. What's going on out there? Uh, it's that disc again. The one we picked up on radar a few hours ago. It's returned. How many times do I have to tell them this is an Air Force base, not a planetarium? Jeff, this thing's been playing hide-and-seek all night. We picked it up at 70,000 feet, going along at 2,000 miles an hour. Why not send up a flight of innocent? <laughs> That's all I need when Bonamede gets here. My best jet's off chasing a meteorite. No, thanks. It's Colonel Ward. Now, quiet down out there, all of you, and get this. The next man who reports a flying saucer will be broken by me personally. I'm tired of all this horse play. This is an Air Force base. Now, get on the ball. But they realize when I'm sweating out here. Can't they understand? Jeff, that's not going to help. Mind your own business, Captain. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it that way. Sit down. I got to talk to someone. Okay, sir. Your building is out of proportion. General Bonamy's visit's routine. You don't know the symptoms. He's been hearing stories about Kinnock's commanding officer. Drinking too much. Derelict in his duties. This is the checkup. Ah, uh, you're guessing. Now I know him. I studied with him too long. I used to be his protege. Yeah. I was going to be a great Air Force man one day. Well. <laughs> Look at me. My wife's dead in a crash. My command's slipping away. My whole life's blacking out in the whiskey bottle. Colonel. Colonel Ward. Sorry, sir. But the missile we've been tracking on radar. I gave strict orders. I know, sir. The tower reports have just buzzed the field. It's been swinging at 100 mile hour, reducing speed, about Mach 1. If this is some kind of joke, sir, sir. It's coming down. It's going to land near the base. This I gotta see. This is tower. All on the north by northeast. Speed straight on the line. Yeah, let me see that. Now this rapidly. Is... What is it, Colonel? Yeah, holy Hannah. Uh, it looks like an arrow. A pin. Uh, no wings, no exhaust. It's gonna land, all right, Hawkins? Yes, sir. Round up the demolition squad. Bring that thing into hangar seven. Right, sir. Drop the turner? Yes, sir. I want all crash equipment on the spot as soon as it touches down. Yes, sir. And notify all all units this field is closed. Cancel all flights. All, in, all incoming planes to another base. Sir, General Bonamy. What's his ETA? 2217. He's due in 12 minutes. You have my orders, Corporal. I'm not taking any chances till I know what we're dealing with. Keep him up there. Yes, sir. Hutch, get me a command car. I want to be there when they bring it in. Right, Colonel, right. On right, Hutch. Yes, sir. Forget what I said in there. One of my bad moods. It's forgotten, Jeff. Attention, all units. Attention, all units. 
Cancel all flights as of 2205. Cancel all leaves and passes. All personnel stand by for emergency instructions. Repeat. Cancel all flights as of 2205. All personnel stand by for emergency instructions. Cancel all leaves and passes. Repeat. Cancel all leaves and passes. This field is closed until further notification. Cancel all leaves and passes. Cancel all flights. I want this hangar cleared immediately. Any man not assigned to this detail, beat it. Now, this isn't a freak show. Hey, yo, yo, stand back there. That gizmo might be anything. Might explode for all we know. Now, let's clear this hangar. All personnel stays out of here until the Dynacon checks that thing over. Sergeant, I want a man posted on every door. Now, let's clear out. And that means you, Mullins, and close those doors. How's it coming, officer? Oh, pretty well, sir. What now, sir? Now, I have to move in with that diamond, Con. I want the sound reading started. I want every sound listed. Huh? Right. Schiller, start recording. Okay, Lieutenant. Well, let's go, pal. Come on, jazz it up, jazz it up. It isn't going to bite you. What do you make of it, Hawkins? Well, this is one of ours, that's for sure, sir. No airfoils, no rocket tubes. First Dynacon reading negative. Second Dynacon reading negative. Lieutenant, there's an inscription on the note. Can you make it out? Never seen it before. Get a picture of it and phototype it to Washington. Then get a cryptographer down here immediately. I want that code broken. How about opening it up? Oh, no. no. Before anyone gets frisky and blows up this field, we'll get an impression of that script to Washington. That ship's not to be touched till we've broken the code, understand? And double a guard around this area. Yes, sir. Now, that is to contact General Bonamy. He's over the field now, waiting landing instructions. He's on now, Colonel. Uh, Colonel Ward, General Bonamy, go ahead. That you, Ward? What's happening down there? Give me landing instructions. I'm sorry, sir, but I want more information on our night visitor. You'll have to go on to San Ramos. This field is 100% restricted. Ward, I'll not be sidetracked. This plane is landing. Now, get this, General. I've notified Mats and Flight Service. If you touch a wheel to Kinnock, I'll have to slap you in the guardhouse. I'm still CO here. I'm not taking any risks till I know what we've got. Hawkins, get me down on the floor. I'll break you for this, Ward. You'll be relieved of command as soon as I get back to Washington. I promise you that. I'm sorry, General. The orders still stand over and out. All right, carry on. It's my show from here on in. Yes, sir. Have that cryptographer report to me as soon as he breaks the code. Yes, sir. Keep checking, Hawkins. Yes, sir. Uh, it's just midnight. Okay, you guys. Let's get those Dynacon readings speeded up. What do you think this is, a tea party? And get that mesoscope ready. I want you to check every vibration. Now, come on, come on. Get the lead out. Get the lead out. Hello, 700, and still no report. That cryptographer must be working my way of China. Bonamy should have reached Washington by now. His TWX ought to be arriving any minute. Jeff, maybe you acted a little too hastily. No, oh, this time I was right. A missile arriving out of nowhere. Tremendous speed, no means of identification. Could be a million things. Hydrogen bomb, poison gas. No, Bonamy would have done the same things in my shoes. Come in. Sir, this TWX just came through from Washington. Ah. Uh-huh. Here she goes. You are hereby notified that Colonel Maurice Johns is arriving at 1400 today to assume command of Kinnock Air Force Base. You will remain on the post for further orders. Signed, Bonamy. Well, it had to come sometime. Come in, come in. Photography? Yeah, about time. Did they break it? Yeah, read that. Are they sure about this? No, uh, these boys know that business. Yeah, from another planet. It's impossible. It couldn't happen. Corporal? Yes, sir. Get this off, General Bonamy. TWX received contents noted, period. Missile script has been deciphered, period. We believe it to be Martian, period. And directing demolition to open it up immediately. Period. Signed, Ward. Did he 
say Martian? That's right, Corporal. We hit the jackpot. Come on, come on, bring that baby back. We ain't got all day. It's been a little over an hour. That's not a hard good. He's stuck. So take the fresh oil. Any luck yet, Hawkins? Should be soon, sir. That metal's like nothing I've ever seen. Huh? Lieutenant, I think I found something. It's a door. Right in front of us, a door. Good, good, good. Uh, give me that, Jimmy. We'll pry it open. Yeah. This is what we needed. Now, now go easy now. That might be dangerous. Carefully. Carefully. Yep. That's it. All right. Now pull it back. Slowly. Slowly. Lift it up. That's it. Slow. Something inside. I can see it. I can see. It's strapped to the bulkhead. If I can just... If I... Oh, my. What is it? It's alive, sir. It's breathing. Something got oxygen from a metal mask. It's moving. I can... It's got eyes. Everything. Get an ambulance down here. This is something I didn't bargain for. Captain, help me get it out. All right. Slowly. Slowly, that's it. Let's get out to the light so we can see it. Slow. Come on. Add a little more. Bore it to the light. There. Now we can all get a look. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to present Admiral Harley Cope, representing the Commander-in-Chief of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, Mr. Toby Stern, President of the Jack Chrysler Manufacturing Corporation, and Mr. F. E. Maslin III of the C. H. Maslin and Sons. Mr. Stern, Mr. Maslin, it is a pleasure on behalf of the one million 250,000 members of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States, all of whom served overseas, to present to Tales of Tomorrow this loyalty award instituted this year in connection with the observance of Loyalty Day, May the 1st. It attests our appreciation of your program's contribution to a better America. The loyalty award reads as follows. Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States. Loyalty Award presented to Tales of Tomorrow in recognition of the commendable public service of this outstanding science fiction television program in helping to broaden through its eminent dramatic presentations the American family's knowledge and understanding of modern science, setting an example of loyalty to our nation, its aims and ideals, Signed, Frank C. Hilton, Commander-in-Chief, dated Loyalty Day, May 1st, 1952. Mr. Mathen, may I present you, uh, may I congratulate you, sir? Thank you, Admiral Cope. It is with real pleasure that I accept this award on behalf of the associates of C.H. Maslin and Sons and the many thousands of loyal dealers from coast to coast. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stern, may I in turn congratulate you too, sir? Thank you, Admiral. Tales of Tomorrow, thank you profusely for this very fine honor. Thank you. And now, back to our story. Plague from Space. Colonel Ward. Yes, I got the x-rays an hour ago. What do they mean? What? How many? All right, keep me posted. That was Hutchinson at the hospital. Major Vickers and five of the other doctors who examined the Martian have dropped. They're having convulsions. I know, Colonel. Three of my men count down. It's spreading all over the field. What about the missile? We dismantled everything, sir. It has an atomic engine about the size of my fist. But no radio, no controls, no nothing. What? 
That thing flew in here at 2,000 miles an hour and landed perfectly. That's right. And just to confuse you some more, Captain Hutchinson showed me the results of five tests given to the Martian. It has the thought patterns of a low-order mammal, like a cat or a dog. But how did it navigate a space vessel from Mars to the Earth? How did it even build such a machine? Beats me. You any theory, sir? Yeah, but they're too crazy. <laughs> Nothing would sound crazy now. It sounds logical. Well, we've established this thing at the hospital as a Martian. He sails in here polluted with an unknown disease. Deduction? Disease warfare. That and is base. crazy, Colonel. Is it? Yeah. Hutch sent this down from the hospital. It's a photograph of a blood smear taken of the Martian a few minutes after it arrived. See those U-shaped specks in the bloodstream there? Yeah, well, what about them? Hutch reported that kind of bacteria was all over the Martian. Everywhere. Every cubic millimeter of blood taken from that creature contained about 5,000 of those specks. That doesn't prove anything, Colonel. Don't you get it? These babies don't belong to the UN. They never heard of the Geneva Convention. They're playing for keeps. They launch a ship packed with disease germs navigated by a suicide pilot. These germs running rampant could plunge this country into a panic. Colonel Ward. Yeah, Hutch. How many more? Okay, I'll be right down. 27 more cases in the last 10 minutes. 16 dead. Turner! You better get back to hanging. Corporal, contact General Bonamy. Tell him this field is quarantined. I want an airdrop. I need every av available concoction here as soon as possible. Serums, antitoxins, antibiotics, the works. Throw the whole medical book at them. Yes, sir. Where are you heading, sir? The hospital. Hutch said he had something new for me. So, you see, Jeff, the last blood count shows no trace of bacteria. The germs have vanished. The Martian is convalescent. That means you got it beat. Fifteen hours and you got it licked. No, no. I'm afraid you're wrong, Jeff. This is more serious than we ever expected. What do you mean by that? You, you just told do me. Do you know what an electroencephalograph is? Well, I've never heard of it. It's a machine that records electrical pulsations of the brain. This morning, we used it on the Martian. Any results? Enough to know that there's little chance of any one of us coming out of this alive. You're crazy. The encephalograph indicated that over a thousand <laughs> wave patterns were emanating from the Martian. It's as though you focused it on a crowd. But you told Hawkins the Martian was irrational. Now he has thousands of brains. Makes sense. I only know what I see. An hour ago, I conducted more tests with the encephalograph. Each infected soldier gave off multiple brave Wayne responses. Well, what's all this leading up to? Just this. Yesterday, the Martian was crawling with germs and indicating thousands of brains. Today, he's germ-free and indicating one brain. The bacteria has moved on. The brain waves have moved on. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Bacteria. Brain waves. The Martians are bacteria with brains? Fantastic. And what's this? A low-order mammal of some sort. Just an animal? This is obviously what they fed on. Hutch, send me some microscopes down to Hangar 7. We're going to go over every atom of that ship with microscopes. Uh, you look like you need some rest. Get up to my office. I'll meet you there in 15 minutes. If this is what you say it is. We've got to move fast. down here on the double. Yes, sir. I'll, What's I'll wrong with you? You sick? Sir. In your office. Captain Hutchinson. He's dead. Hutch. It's contagious. We've got to get away. Get control of yourself now, Corporal. Look. Outside, they're all dropping. I've seen them. 
A hundred men dead. I've got to get out of here. Nothing safe here. Now, oh, wait a minute, Turner. There's a guard posted at every exit. They'd kill you as soon as you tried to get away. No. No, I want to live. We've got to keep the germs here isolated. I don't care. I don't care. This is my life. I don't want to die. Look, Colonel. Let me get away. We can escape. Escape! Turner, Turner come back here. Don't be a fool. Turner! Turner, come back here. Stop, Turner! Stop! Yes, Sergeant Morgan. Did you use the microscopes? Ah, just as I thought. Sergeant, how many men left in your unit? Hawkins, too, huh? All right, keep me posted, Sergeant. Invasion. A Martian invasion like nothing you've ever dreamed of. There's only that creature in the hospital. It'd be simple, but there's nothing you can see or shoot at. Martians are bacteria. Organized and intelligent enough to build and navigate a ship through space and do it with controls so small it took a microscope to find them. Communications! Communications! Bacteria, bacteria. This is their invasion, their war. Planned, calculated, certain. And now one final decision has to be made. One man to make it. But what? How? Decide quickly. They're waiting. Waiting to spread beyond this base, reaching out to the cities. Ravishing a nation, the world, creeping over the whole earth till nothing is left but a dry, scorched wasteland. A dry, scorched. Live Martians, dead Martians. That's the only way. Get me General Bonamid at the Pentagon and make it fast. It's urgent. Baker 287J. This is Colonel Ward. You're coming in loud and clear, General. Watch your position. Passing full to range, Jeff. Altitude 36,000. Should be reaching you in three or four minutes. How many men left? Last count came in two hours ago. Thirteen. Thirteen out of 2,000. How are you feeling, Jeff? Never mind about me. Just make sure you get directly over the field. Now, Jeff, listen to me. There's not much time. Are you sure this is the only way? The only way. Ah, here you play now, General. You're right on schedule. Jeff, listen. The whole country knows what you're doing. The sacrifice won't be forgotten. I promise you that, Jeff. Jeff. An 
Now let's come back to the world of today for a minute and see a man who's puzzling over something most of us are worrying about today. What should we get Mother for Mother's Day? Now let's see. It'd be nice to get her a new watch. It'd be wonderful to get her one of those new bracelet watches. She'll love that. Oh, but a bracelet watch costs fifty dollars. That's too expensive. We can't afford it. Hold on, you can't afford it. And here's how. Just take Mom's old watch to your jeweler and have him put on this new golden fantasy watch bracelet by Chrysler. Why, it's like magic. It immediately transforms her watch into a beautiful new bracelet watch. But you don't pay fifty dollars. You pay just nine ninety-five for the fantasy watch band. You save at least forty dollars. And you give Mother the newest, most glamorous fashion of today. Now, here's a close look at it. The new Chrysler band that really becomes part of her watch, that makes it high fashion and a true bracelet watch. It's gold, Golden Fantasy by Chrysler. Now, notice this. These bands expand. So when you wear a fantasy, you get all the safety and comfort of an expansion band. And practical, when you do household tasks, that expansion feature lets you slip fantasy up, out of the way. And Golden Fantasy costs only nine ninety-five. Federal tax included. Less than many ordinary bands. So go to your jeweler. Let him make Mom's old watch into a new bracelet watch with Fantasy by Chrysler. The preceding program, originally telecast by ABC in New York, has come to you by special video recording. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.